And welcome to another video. This is gonna be kind of like a different style than I usually do So please comment and let me know what you think of it I just thought I'd switch it up on us and have some fun So it's gonna be part sit down chit chat part vlog So it's gonna kind of like go back and forth between the vlog clips that I got and then me kind of explaining my week that I've had So yeah, let me know what you think And I also want to mention that throughout this video some of the outfits or pieces of clothing you'll be seeing me wear are from our sponsor of today's video Thread Up. Thread Up is the largest online thrift store with over 40,000 different brands. Shopping from thrift stores is a really sustainable way to shop, and previous to Thread Up, I was not into thrifting. It just was a real struggle bus for me, but having the option to online thrift is great, especially during this last two years. We love online shopping. You can shop from some of your favorite brands, Adidas, Lululemon, you name it. They've got it at a discounted price. Girl, you can get some great savings, let me just tell you. And using code Molly Burke, you can get 30% off your first purchase. So click the link below to check that out. I got this top right here. This top is from one of my favorite brands, Wilfred, and originally it was 107 and I got it for $25.99 which is crazy because it is an utterly perfect condition. And to be honest, I think I'm actually gonna have to give it to my mom. I was gonna wear it out tonight, but I think I'm gonna have to give it to my mom because it is so my mom and it's gonna look so good on her. It's just so up her alley. So I think this is gonna be like my one time getting to wear it and then it'll be passed off to her to enjoy. Next, I got this Madewell cardigan. And this Madewell cardigan, another one of my favorite brands, was originally like 148 which is wild and I got it for 49 so that's a huge savings like pretty much a hundred dollars and it's like the perfect fall vibe and I paired it with these pants that I got these black legging like pants are from White House Black Market who I've never tried before but they're really nice quality they're originally $35 and the price that I paid was $12.99 I also got that iconic IMG jacket, which I will be wearing a ton this fall season. It was originally $119 and I got it for $37.99. Okay, this piece is almost frustrating to me. I got these Wilford pants. They're black, wide leg with like a paper bag style waist. And they're originally $143. Now I got them for $23.99 which is, again, a massive savings. But you know why this bothers me? Because I bought those same pair of pants in cream like five months ago for full price. Literally the same pants. So now I have the cream version and the black version, except I saved a heck of a lot of coin on the black version. So check it out, Molly Burke, to get 30% off your first purchase. Link down below to check it out and shop all the savings. And thank you to Threadup for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes of it. Oof, meat and potatoes. Yeah, I could go for some of that. Mm. <sighs> wow, it's been such a journey to get to this point, hasn't it? You guys have been on the road, the wild road with me to get here, to get baby Benix home, baby B Benix Burke home with me. Um, it has been, I mean, months in the making, like choosing to retire Gallup and get a new guide and not knowing when I would, and then finding out when I would, but not knowing what dog it would be. Like, it's just been such a journey. And then the training and staying a few nights in Montreal and then flying home and having the trainer Nico out to work with us. And then Nico left. And then my parents left. Um, my parents went to Ireland for 10 days. They have not seen their family in four years. They usually try to see them every two years, but the two year mark hit right when the pandemic hit. So of course they weren't able to see them. And both my grandmas are in the late eighties and my parents really wanted to get over. This was one of the only times that was gonna work. So unfortunately it meant that my first week without any trainers helping me, I also didn't have my parents helping me either. And you know, my mom works full time with me, um, filming all of my content, doing all of my work with me. So not having her is not just not having my mom, it's not having my business partner. So it was kind of an overwhelming feeling to realize that I was going to be pretty alone in this and I'm new to this city. So I don't really have like a big group of friends to lean on or rely on. And my boyfriend goes to work every day. Like 
the average person does. He works out of a WeWork, he works very long hours. So I knew that I was going to go from like just getting a new guide dog home and having like the support of a trainer to not having the support of a trainer or really anybody else during the days. It was just gonna be me and Benix and Lavender and it was all up to me to deal with it and make the right choices. And it felt pretty overwhelming and pretty stressful. And I wanted to kind of take you on the journey because it's real and it's raw and it's authentic to my experience. And I wanna say to any service dog user, any first time guide user, it is not all like sunshine and roses when you bring home a new guide dog. It's a lot of work, it's really hard, and if anything, it's harder than being at training. Because when you're at training, your entire world revolves around training with this dog. And then when you're at home, all of a sudden you're balancing still training with your dog and regular life. And of course, when you're at training, you have the support of professionals, of the trainers. But when you're at home and the trainer leaves, it's all on you to make the right choices. Uh, and to care for this animal. And transition can be hard. Every dog handles it differently. Some handle it better than others. Thankfully, Benix, in terms of like his, his personality, his happiness, he's been so happy. He's been thriving with his guiding, but he had a really hard time with a food change. And that was definitely a big struggle. I've been dealing with a dog who's had digestive issues and diarrhea all week, which is stressful and, um, I just want to make the right decisions and I just want to make him feel better. And um, so day one on my own with baby Benix. Hello and welcome to a vlog. The scariest part about vlogging on my own is always wondering what might be in my background that I don't know you guys are seeing. Also, whenever I vlog on my own, I make these videos like an hour long because I like talking to people and you guys are who I have to talk to. So I just consistently turn on my phone and just start talking to you guys. So hi, welcome. Um, this video is my first week home with Benix on my own. So we arrived home midnight last Sunday. Today is Monday morning. So we have officially been home for just about a week. Hi, Benix. Hello, baby Benix. Uh, we just got back from a walk, his morning walk. So anyways, it's Monday morning. My boyfriend went off to work. I had breakfast, got Benix out. The biggest thing we're working on with him in getting settled, like his, the biggest issue we're having is switching his food over because they don't sell his food he was raised on here where I live. But he's been doing so amazing. I w There's some things like, I'm like, oh, I wish I was filming this so they could see this because it's so amazing. Like we run into a number of obstacles that I wasn't expecting, like sidewalk closure or like a weird construction thing or a truck blocking the route or whatever. And that's just over the past three days. And every single time he has handled it impeccably. Uh, impeccably? I think I'm saying the right word. He's handled it so well. I like can't get over it. I'm so proud of him. And um, I, every time I question myself, like did I handle that well? Because especially when it's like a road closure that I'm not expecting, like he stops and won't go any further. And if I tell him to go forward, he'll start to back up um, to show me like, no, we can't go. And so I feel like every time I'm dealing with that and I'm alone and there's nobody sighted to tell me why this is happening, I kind of go into like, not panic mode, but like, I get confused and a little flustered and I start trying to figure out what's going on. And then I sometimes have to like try to hear for a sighted person and ask a stranger what's happening and try to figure out what to do next. And so I feel like I'm like, oh, am I so focused on like figuring out what's going on that I'm not reminding him enough that he's doing the right thing. I don't know. I just want to be a good mom. <laughs> but I feel so confident with him. It's the greatest feeling ever. I feel so confident. Like I can do anything on my own now and I would feel perfectly happy doing it. That's a really good feeling because I haven't lived in this neighborhood for that long. And all of the time that I have lived here, I was like relearning how to use my cane and slowly winding down Gallup's work. This is the first time living in this neighborhood that I feel like I can like truly go anywhere on my own, not just like, oh, to Starbucks or like the few locations I felt comfortable doing on my own. Now I'm like, nah, I can go anywhere. I can get on the train on my own and I can get to the other side of town and go to the shopping mall on my own. Like I can do anything. I can go pick up my mail all the way across town. Um, day one, we really just did, you know, puppy playtime, playing, bonding. He loves toys. He loves to play. He's extremely affectionate. So uh, I'm still working on bonding, you know? I, I mean, I love him, but like you, the solidifying a bond takes a long time. 
Um, one thing I'm also working on is trusting him. I, in my brain, trust him because he's done nothing to make me not trust him, but my body needs to learn to trust him. My body needs to learn to relax. This is a different dog and he, you know, has a slightly different pull, a different way of walking. And so my body needs to learn to relax and trust. So I'm learning to just, every time I notice holding tension in my left arm with the harness, just like reminding myself like, relax. Relax your body, relax your arm. I was talking with one of my friends recently and we were discussing guide dogs. She has two guide dogs and she was saying, I was joking with her, I was like, I feel like bringing home a new guide dog is like bringing home a new baby. Like your whole world just revolves around this new animal and you're still learning to understand it, to understand what XYZ behavior means, to understand like, when does he wanna to go to the bathroom and all of these things, like what does this behavior mean? And she said she's had two guide dogs and two babies and she can confirm it is like bringing home a new baby. So the other thing I'm really working on is self-care. I'm, I, this week did minimal work and just really focused on Benex and my own self-care because I have been kind of neglecting myself and putting myself to the back burner for a long time, at least, at least a month or two because all of my focus and energy has been on work and guide dog and I'm frankly exhausted. I have been so drained physically and I don't wanna let my health go downhill. So that was a big part of this week for me as well, is just allowing myself to rest and care for myself. Now, a big focus of this week has been doing lots of different training walks. Um, you know, when you first get a guide dog home, you've gotta follow all of the rules as rigidly as possible um, because your guide dog will learn. Your dog will learn Every time I go down the street, I turn left at this corner. So eventually they're just gonna go left when you get to that corner and that's okay. But at first you still wanna make sure they're hopping up to every curb before you let them turn left, you know, before you let them start making decisions. And the reason is because you wanna solidify in the dog's mind that just cause you're home from training, just cause you're out of the campus, just because there's no trainers around anymore, doesn't mean you get to stop doing your job. You still have to do your job. So the first, Three months are very hard, then it gets a bit easier. Then the first six months, then the first year. And after that first year, it really opens up. But the first three months and the first year in general are, are the, the hardest. You essentially become the trainer. Uh, and that's part of why you go to training is to learn how to train, to learn how to become the trainer for the dog. You have to teach it new skills, You know, teach it to find new places for you that they've never been to. And that's why these first few months are really formative for the dog to understand that I am now your trainer. And the bond, right? You you have to be really strict the first few months with your family and friends. Absolutely no petting, no playing with, no talking to, no looking at those first few months, even when they're off harness, because you want the dog to learn that absolutely you are the only boss. You are the person it comes to. You are its comfort. You are its mom or its dad. It really is all on you. Yeah, so just working on training walks and, and because I don't want him to get used to anything and start making his own decisions uh, quite yet, uh, I'm switching it up every time. So even if I'm just doing a simple around the block walk, one time I leave my apartment, I turn left outside and we go with that direction. The next time we go right when I leave and go that direction. The other thing I wanna mention is I tried to get some footage of me walking with him, but at first, at least at the Mira Foundation, we're not supposed to walk with anything in our right hand. And so in a few months from now, I'll be able to start doing that a little bit, carrying my coffee when I walk or vlogging with, one with the phone in one hand and the dog in the other but they really, for the first while, do not want you to carry anything in your right hand. So I feel like a bit of a diva, because whenever I am with people, I'm like, can you carry this? Because I'm like not supposed to carry anything. Um, but that's why I'm trying to bring like backpacks and my fanny packs with me, so I can try to put stuff in there. But obviously if it's like a coffee, I can't do that, so I'll have somebody carry it for me if I'm with somebody. And if I'm not, I just usually like sit down at the restaurant and drink it there because um, you do a lot of hand gestures at Mira. It's a combination of ver verbal and physical. And um, so they want the dog to really get that. And I do notice that when the times that I was trying to vlog a bit, he was confused. Like he was kind of like looking back at me, like where is my hand gesture? And again, it's something he'll get used to not having to have, but um, it's good to just continue to do exactly what they're used to from training.
The other thing that I did was I went and I got my nails done, which was fun. I had never gone to the salon on my own, so I was a little bit nervous. The route to get there was super simple, but I've always gone with my cane. And unfortunately, in the city that I live in, I face more service dog denials than any city I've ever lived in. Extremely unfortunate. Um, but it's the reality in this city. It's really not very service dog friendly. Um, and it's mainly because of an extreme lack of education on the laws here and an extreme lack of awareness about the laws here and a lot of misinformation about the laws here. So that's been really challenging and because it was my first time going with my guide dog to this specific location and not a cane uh, and my first time alone, I wasn't sure how they were gonna react, but they were so sweet, not a word just like brought me to a chair and we're like, here's where the dog can sit right beside you. We picked a chair special for that. We are all harnessed up. We're outside and we're walking to the nail salon. I, had, I think I've decided that I am just gonna go with all black on my toes, maybe matte black on my fingers, just to keep it simple and easy. And I'll match Mr. Bannock's. Bannock's, another. Bannock, 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 Bannock. Hello. And I really appreciated that because unfortunately in this city, I'm pretty much anxious everywhere I go for the first time and even places that I've been to 50 times, I still face questions. It was just really nice to like go somewhere for the first time on my own with him and have zero issues. It felt like, like a good sign a good omen. I also went and grabbed a Starbucks after my nails and took him to go play, um, just have some off-leash playtime, and it brought my friend Michaela with me because she was able to be sighted and supervise him visually, which I appreciate um, with it still being early days. Okay, you guys, nails are done, and I'm gonna go pick up a Starbucks and then bring him for off-leash playtime in the same space. So we're just waiting for the cross um, I'm blind, so when the drink comes out, would they be able to put it in my hand with a lid on it? Thanks so much. Screenshot. Okay, so I just asked them when they gave me my drink if there was a table available outside, and she told me exactly where to go when I got out. Um, Benix is just sitting on the ground. It is so freaking sunny out right now, and I don't have sunglasses, and it is a big blind girl mistake, let me tell you. Okay, I ended up having an amazing afternoon. It's like heading to 5.30. Benix had a huge play, so cute, just running around so happy. He really needs to release that energy. Hanging out with my friend Michaela and her husband, Foster, and three of us just kind of chatted at Starbucks. Then we let Benix play, then they came back here and Michaela helped me with a little bit of work stuff. She's actually babysitting Gallup while my parents are in Ireland. Her parents are the ones at Dwell Living doing my condo, so whole thing, whole circle. But yeah, that's really that's really what's going down. Slowly but surely, we're making friends here, Benix. That's right. On Tuesday, I really took it easy and we just went to the pool. I think I'm recording. Benix, look at the camera. <laughs> He's like, no, mom. Um, so it is Tuesday. I've taken him for a walk. We've been lazy, and by we, I mean I. Played with him a bit, um, got some work stuff done, and now we're gonna go to the swimming pool. This will only be his second time coming swimming with me. He did great the first time, so off we are. Speech off. Okay, so he guided me right to the chair where I just put all my stuff down, and then I just put him on the floor between the two and tell him to stay and he'll just sit there while I swim like a little good boy speech off so I just got out of the pool and into the hot tub and brought Benix over with me and he like took it upon himself to tuck himself under the bench I did not tell him that he needed to lay there I like brought him over here to lay down and then when I told him to cooch he like walked over there and tucked himself under the bench He's like, I will lay with your things and I will keep them safe even though no one is here with us, just in case. On Wednesday, it was a bit rough. This is when his diarrhea really took off to the next level despite the fact that we had been doing two days of just rice and pumpkin. It was just getting worse, not better. So he woke me up at like 5.30 in the morning, urgently needing to go. Um, had diarrhea twice that morning and twice that afternoon. So at this point I called Mira 
and got their advice and they advised that I go get a food, a special digestive food, called my vet, they agreed, I went to the vet. Speech off. Okay, I look a mess, I'm sure. It's 8.40 a.m. on Wednesday. I've been up with Benix since 6.30 a.m. I planned to get up at 8.30, which is uh, earlier than like I usually do. Um, he's usually good to sleep till like nine, um, but I was getting up at 8.30 because I have a hair appointment at nine to get my hair curled because I have a shoot with Allure magazine today, which is why my hair looks a mess because I knew I was getting it done. <laughs> So I didn't do it myself. But I woke up at 6.30 and Benix was not in the bed with me. And he always sleeps in the bed. And he's never left. Like even when my boyfriend gets up to go to work, Benix stays in bed with me. And he doesn't get out. Um, and so I was concerned and I went to go look for him. And I found him laying in his bed in the living room. And he was just kind of like sitting there with his ears all perky. Uh, like when I touched his head, I could feel his ears were perky. I was like, that's weird. Right after he ate at six, around 6.40, he like went straight to the door, the front door of my condo or my apartment and just kind of stood there. And I was like, okay, he urgently has to go. So I took him down, had a poop, which was his most solid poop he's had in a long time. But it was like clearly an urgent poop and then a big pee another big pee, I brought him back up, and he walked and went straight to the door again, even though we just got up. So I was like, you know, I'm gonna leave it a bit. I'm gonna see if he settles. He didn't, so I just brought him back down at like 8.20. So like a little over an hour later. And um, he had another poop, but it was like very gassy and then more pee, and then I brought him back up, and he's still super unsettled. Now he's laying in his bed, thankfully, but he, like, wouldn't get onto the bed. He just kept staring at me, like, standing and staring at me, but he wouldn't get on the bed when I would tell him he could come up, which is usually how he tells me, like, something's wrong, you know? So I'm definitely gonna call the vet. I'm quite concerned. I'm gonna tell Mira as well. Um, just get all hands on deck with any advice. Maybe Mira can send a bag of his food, so we have more time to extend his switch over. I'm not sure, but. There he is. There he is in his bed. And we've got me in the chair with my hair done. Thanks, Armine. You're very welcome. Oh, it's good to be back and have my fluffy hair again. Yeah, the curls are back. <laughs> Oh, I look so good. Every time people see me with like curled hair on Instagram, they're like, girl, drop a tutorial on how you curl your hair. I'm like, it's super simple. <laughs> I go to my hairdresser and she does it. I do it all. I'm, I'm behind these curls. That's my... We should do a tutorial one That's day. my truth. I don't do this. <laughs> Armine does. The professional. That's why they look so good. Okay, so the camera guy is here. I just have to buzz him up. And he's gonna start setting up I and mean, then we should start shooting in just under an hour i have this moon top on black jeans and black loafers no makeup because i'm supposed to do my makeup on camera that's what the shoot is today mr bennix is laying in his bed there he is he's been bringing me a toy okay so camera guy just left i have the hiccups this guy needs to have a little runaround, so i asked my friend michaela to come with me so she can visually supervise him so happy in this outfit right now. I was really cold and uncomfortable in my filming outfit. Now, I am so cozy in this like very fall vibes look. My black turtleneck, the Madewell cardigan, these pants. I've got some comfy boots on and I'm gonna throw on this. I feel like it's so funny because I look the most presentable I've looked all week and I'm um, feeling the worst I've felt all week. <laughs> I'm just having a bad day, you guys. Okay, let's go play with Benix at the park and then we're gonna go to the vet and we're gonna get him some food for his bad digestion. Picked up a specialty dog food. I could pick wet or kibble, I picked kibble. This digestive food is very expensive, but absolutely worth it because thank goodness it's made a huge difference. Today is Friday and he is just doing so much better. Um, yesterday, Thursday, he still had some digestive issues, but that's because he had only started it Wednesday night. But by Friday, he's doing like fabulous. So I couldn't be happier. And just praying that when I do start very slowly integrating a new food in, it goes well. Hopefully it's the correct way. Um, it's the other side but I got it from my vet so 
Fenix was like, feed me, mommy, feed me. Here, I don't know if I'm in frame, but hi. Um, so I went and picked that up after giving Benix a good play. And I had a call with Mira today just to go over it. And they recommended going and getting a gastrointestinal food just to give, cause he's of course now probably inflamed, you know, just to give his tummy a break. So I'm gonna do just this for a week. And then I'm going to give him slowly introducing a new food. Um, so I picked this up from my vet. I called them and they suggested the same thing. So we're all on the same page. Other than that, like emotionally, he settled just fine. He's happy. He has not had any accidents anywhere. He hasn't gotten stressed. He's been guiding flawlessly. If anything, he's been excited for the change. So that's great. Um, Every dog's gonna be different, just like every human takes to change differently. So I'm not like upset about it. I'm not too concerned. I feel like we have a really great plan in place. And I know I have a great team between the Mira team and their vet and between my vet here, who Lavender and Gallup have been going to since I moved here. Um, I feel like we're gonna figure everything out and everything's gonna be just fine for this man. But he's like, mommy, mommy feed me. All I've had for days is rice and pumpkin and I would like real food. So I'm gonna feed him. Then Thursday, I met up with a friend who I met on TikTok and we grabbed lunch together and it was so fun and we went to Starbucks. I hardly got any footage this day because I just had way too much fun, but yeah. Okay, okay, hi. Um, I am going out for lunch. I'm very excited, today's Thursday. I am going to grab lunch with a friend we've never met in person. Um, he's also blind and we met on TikTok and he is a blind drag queen and I've never met a blind drag queen before so I'm extremely excited. So we're grabbing lunch. I literally just came to my bathroom to go pee and I had like closed the door over but I didn't like click it in and Benix pushes it open and walks in and lays down and I didn't get the camera out on time but then Lavender freaking waltzes in here so then in this small little bathroom I'm peeing and I've got Benix laying there and Lavender wandering around I was like oh my god it's like a zoo in here he's ready he's like he's so ready. Time, time, time. what's behind there what's behind there that's me that's me that's me Already going on. Hey. <laughs> no, babe, you got it, babe. You got to do it. Okay, you got to put your fists up, like, 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 like you're gonna like tumble it. Bop, bop, bop. You feel me? Yeah. Go ahead, do that. Wail it, okay? A few rolls. And then move your head. Wail it, babe. I don't want to hurt myself. Whoa. Foster, be okay. ready to catch it. <laughs> He's got good here. reflexes. Okay, so my friends and I, after going out, decided to break into dwell living. It's fine. And they have this in their basement, as well as my bathtub over there. <laughs> but um, they're trying to make me box. <laughs> yeah, buddy! Oh my god, you're like Gala! It's a Gala! Oh yeah, this is all I love. <laughs> And then today I actually slept in and Benix was so great about it. He didn't wake me. He just cuddled like a little baby and um, that was a blessing. I really needed that. I overall have had a really good day. The last two days have been much better than the first part of the week. So everything's looking up. And then tonight I'm going for some martinis and appetizers with friends. Benick's first Friday night out. And that's that. That was my first week home alone with my baby. So ups and downs, good and bad as it is. That's what it's like. Um, that's my experience. If you are a guide dog or service dog user, share your experience of what it was like bringing your dog home. Or if you've rescued a dog, if you've gotten a puppy, share like what your experience bringing the dog home was like. How did the dog adapt? How did the dog adjust? What were the highs? What were the lows? What were the challenges? Let's chat. I wanna know, thank you again to ThreadUp for sponsoring this video. Again, you can use code Molly Burke for 30% off your first purchase. Link down below. Until next time, you can click over here to see this video or over here to see this one. Bye guys.